Ooh, selectors, and welcome back to the Life First Podcast. Uh, we're going to be talking today about some uh, some coin stuff, right? What are the best coins that you can play? Uh, why would you be playing coins? And uh, basically, like, what are the best cards to be playing with coins? Now that we've got full sets of centers that, that give coins, it's starting to become a relevant topic. Uh, and we will get back to a point where coins will start mattering again in We Cross. It is worth mentioning that coins in, as far as I know, in uh, All-Star are one of the most important mechanics that you can possibly do, to the point where there are some decks that even play um, uh, with, you know, a, a full assist line and a center L-Rig just so that way they can get access to coins. So coins are an incredibly important uh, mechanic to We Cross's history as well as We Cross as a game. Why are coins so important? Well, that's because they're basically just free resources, right? Yes, you might have a center L rig that is slightly worse than the others, but more or less, it's just basically another free free resource, right? Like enter, you have to work for cards draw, you have to work for coins. You're just given, uh, and coins can basically directly. Um, turn into resources or effects that are pretty unique to those to those things. Um, in We Cross, as it currently stands, I'm recording this as of set nine. There's no real great coin cards um, going all the way up to set thirteen, which is in We Cross in uh, Japan right now. There's still not really any great coins, um, but there are some cards that do coin stuff better than others. The S tier is the uh, sort of like the highest tier of, of coins that you can play. Basically, what I'm saying is these cards are so good, right, that you aren't playing different centers or you're playing like Robo Wee Cross in order to gain access to coins that you wouldn't normally have access to coins. Maybe assists that will give you the access to coins that you don't normally have. And currently in this tier, we have zero cards. Um, this is just to say, not to say that coins are bad, this is just to say that there's no cards right now that are so overwhelmingly powerful with the coin mechanic that you should be stuffing coins into your deck unnaturally so. As it stands right now with Wee Cross, if you're having a center that you want to play that also plays coins, you have a significant amount of cards that you can use to play it, but not so significant that you're like warping yourself around it. Um, the next tier is the A tier. Basically these are the, in my opinion, you will play these if you have coins. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to play these, by the way. It just means that these should be the first cards that come to your head when you're thinking about coins and whether or not you should play something. Uh, the first set here is um, Alios Perluk and uh, Recovery. So Alios Perluk has some cool, interesting effects, but the most important part is that you can spend two coins to make your opponent discard a card. Um, inevitably, this acts sort of like a random drain. Um, where you, random drains power is that you basically spend a, uh, a, a enter, you make your opponent discard a card, aka they lose a resource, not at random, but they just, they lose a resource and you gain a resource because you get a card back, right? So it's basically for the cost of a enter, you make the opponent discard a card and it's free otherwise. Alus is sort of similar. If you're going to play this as a, um, as a level three, then what ends up happening is basically you've quote unquote drawn a card. You've you've got your resource, and this is just a free discard, which makes it pretty good against the opponent. Um, it's got other effects too, and I like all the other effects as well. Um, and I think that's that's probably one of the best reasons it to play a deck if you have already coins in there. Um, Recovery is another one, and this is sort of a little bit of a hot take for me. Recovery is a very terrible card unless you're playing with coins. Um, if you were if you were um, Basically, if you are playing with coins and you have, for, for the cost of a single coin bet, right, you get to uh, draw three cards and discard two cards. That makes you basically have, because you're also using this and it costs zero enter, um, it basically means that you are filtering your hand. So with a couple of these end coins, if you've got nothing else to play coins with, um, this ends up being pretty good. Sorry, nothing else to play spells with. So if you're like a spells light deck, but you have coins, recovery is actually a really, really good um, source of smoothing in your deck. There's this concept in Magic the Gathering that hasn't really translated over to We Cross uh, called Cantrips. And the decks that really love Cantrips are these combo decks, and there's not a ton of good combo decks in We Cross either. So this is why this card is very powerful but underutilized right now, is that you don't need air, right? You don't need to filter your deck and basically do nothing else with your turn. Um, 
but there will come a time when the, the, the card pool is larger and that's an effect that will look more desirable, in which case recovery becomes really good. Um, these are the cards that I think are really great. I also think that, like, generally speaking, you're not going to use recovery if you have, like, or if you're jammed pack with other ways to use your coins. But if you have a center that has coins, you have access to blue, and you don't know what else to put into your deck, put just four recovery in your deck, and your deck will be better for it. Um, the next set is, you can tell I still have the Japanese version up here, so I haven't updated this in a little while. Um, but this is the uh, this is the Nanashi Memoria, as well as Westeria Natural Plant. Um, I think Westeria Natural Plant is a fantastic card. Uh, for the cost of a single coin, you can enter charge one. So your basically conversion rate is a coin to an enter. And if you think about the fact that um, basically throughout a game, you'll get five coins. If you converted all of those five coins into enter, let's say, then you end up with five enter. And that's ridiculous. Like, there is no, there's, like, it just blows the green um, Elrigs out of the water. Bang can enter charge three, which is huge. Uh, Wolf can enter charge three, which is huge. Uh, five enter added to your to your uh, center Elrig is insane. Um, even a couple extra enters is added to your to your center Elrig is insane. Uh, the Nanashi Memoria has the ability to target two things on your on your attack step basically and give them negative three thousand. But if you use coin coin, you can give something negative five thousand. There's a couple other ways to kill things open lanes with um, coins but not a ton of them. I really like these very tangible results that you can get from coins. Whether it's you pay a coin, you draw a card, you pay a coin, you enter charge, you pay a coin, you make the opponent discard a card, you pay a coin, you open up a lane. These things are all technically card advantage or resource advantage, and those are the direct translations for coins that I really like. Um, moving down into B tier, we have, these are, these have a role and that you will use them if you have coins. Now, this is not to say, again, right, like these are worse than these decks. They're just more narrow, right? These these cards are really strong, but these are more narrow. But they might be more powerful in that respect. So you will have a, a role that you might need filled in your deck, and then these, these coin-esque things can come and do it, right? These first two are really good at great examples on it. Mask Legend and Prison Please. Uh, Prison Please has the bet two coins. If you do, you can do negative 12,000 on a Signy. Uh, Mass Legend basically just lets you vanish something uh, in general. Both of these more or less say uh, kill something uh, kill something small or kill anything if you have coins. Um, both of these do a job, which is kill things, right? So if you're in these aggro decks that struggle to have a catch-all answer against something like Remember or or whatever, these these cards come in clutch for that kind of thing. And they have a very specific role. In fact, this is one of those things where I'm basically when I'm when I'm finishing my deck and I'm looking at like three or four flex spots, these are these are sort of one of the roles I look at, especially if it's more of an aggressive deck. Uh, the next tut two here are the Donna Memoria as well as the Mita Mita something or other. Um, these all have a very specific uh, function in the decks, right? So the Mita, which is the red Signy here with that it's a level one three thousand, has coin coin uh, kill something that's negative, vanish something that's negative. Advantage something that's 3,000 power or less, right? This is basically a free Ramel at the cost of coin coin, which is a serious cost. Coin coin is, is a little bit more than you'd rather pay for a 3,000 or less vanish. But being free, it still is notable as very, very, very strong. In fact, most decks that wouldn't normally want run Ramel and have access to coins would consider running that card just because of the free spot of it. Likewise, Donna is more expensive than what I, I'm really caring to play, but I, I'm actually a pretty big fan of Donna, and I've played Donna quite a bit. Um, it has lots of abilities, but its coin ability specifically is that it's got coin, coin, coin. Look at the top three cards of your, your deck. You can take a you can take a, a Signy and put it into your hand. Not a level two or less Signy, right, like uh, Haniel does. Um, a Signy. So it can be a guard, it can be a game-winning card, it could be any of those things. It's just basically search. Now the issue with three coins is that three coins is significantly more costly than two coins. If it was two coins, it would be an amazing card. Um, three coins means that you really can only use this effect once, and then you have to use other coin effects for the rest of the game unless you have more ways to gain coins. Um, getting access to uh, guards or other such things are very important. In fact, I use this card specifically in Mel, 
um, as one of the more filtering cards in it because the deck really needs access to filtering. And I would like to use the Enter for getting souls instead of actually running things like Haniel and stuff like that. Um, green decks specifically really like Don Donna's uh, coin, coin, coin ability. Um, although it being a little costly is annoying. Both of these, what I'm saying is they have rolls. If you need more free filtering, this is great. If you need more damage output, the other one is great too. Uh, moving right along, we've got Carnival Memoria and Yukimi Memoria. Both these have a very specific role that you are trying to function with it. Yukimi is got a role of enter starving the opponent, right? Yes, the coin effect is to specifically to basically draw a card, which it does very, very well if you've ever played it in, um, in Aya. Um, but the role is that it actually, the more important role is that it actually enter starves your opponent. So yes, this is a, a way to gain access to draw a card with your with your coins and a very, very, very uh, streamlined way to do it. Again, single coin. Um, but it, it, ha it has the downside of having to do it on the action, like as the attack step thing. Um, so yes, it's a good card, but it has a very specific role. Carnival also has weirdly the complete opposite of a specific girl. So Carnival's ability is you can pay red, coin, 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 right? Three coins, and you can make target Signy on the opponent's field servant zero till end of turn. It vanillas out something completely. Rarely do you want to use this um, against anything other than, I don't know, um, H2O. I mean, there's a lot of cards, right, where this is pretty good. But all of those cards, you can also play Yuki, which is a uh, level one white if you had access to it. Carnival could theoretically go into a red deck as an extra card in order to um, in order to, to uh, vanilla out something and then make it easier to vanish. Um, but that's not its primary function. Its primary function is actually its action ability. Once per turn, put all the cards underneath it or attached to this Signy into the owner's trash. This Signy becomes the same card as target Signy on the field without a blank icon till end of turn. That blank can include harmony on rise. So here's the deal. Carnival is great at mimicking other cards. It actually gets better as the, the pool of cards widen. And instead of having access to four of a card in your deck, you usually can put two Carnival into your deck and then now say, I have access to six of those cards, specifically six of them that play nicely with each other. So there's a lot of like team Signy or uh, specifically center Signy, Disona Signy in the future uh, that are very good used with Carnival where you can double down on the Disonas. Um, that's the function of Carnival. Carnival's main... The, the, what these two basically share is these two have a function outside of their coin stuff, but their coin stuff makes them better. So you don't necessarily need to play them in a coin-based deck, but if you are playing coins and you have this role that you need, they become all-stars in that deck. There you go. Last uh, couple in the in this function as... Uh, these are have a role are Lilith and the others set. Basically, these all have life burst. They're vanilla 10,000 powers that have life burst that say pay a coin. If you do, um, something way better happens, right? Um, and it's usually just that the power range that they can get rid of is much, much better. Um, you end up playing these as like a one of or a two of in coin decks. Like if you would be playing a buckler, which uh, I just won the, I just I just uh, got top eight on one of the most recent GPs. I have two bucklers in my deck. Vanillas are still quite powerful with very powerful life bursts. I need a buckler in order to do it. These are the same. These actually would have been better than buckler in some of those scenarios um, if I had coins. But you know I wasn't playing a center that had coins. So these have a very specific role. If you are looking for that role to be filled, if you need some flex cards at the end of your stuff and you don't have enough coin usage, um, then that can be something you could do. We'll talk about coin usage in a second, too. Um, the last one is a Nutrition as well as Honeytra uh, Master Trickster. So Honeytra basically has the ability of um, being almost directly a, a random drain on the opponent. Your opponent discards a card and then you also can pay Queen Queen and you draw a card. Pretty similar to Random Drain. The fact that if Random Drain was stapled on it as Signy, it would be significantly good. Um, so this is 
a very strong uh, card that you can play. It's just, it's you kind of need coins for it to be good. Without coins, it's not super great. But if you're looking to be a disruptive deck, then Honeytra is a really good choice for you. Nutrition is also kind of one of those ones that is like slightly borderline playable on its own, but then becomes more playable. You spend a green enter, you get yourself enter charge two, which basically means that you enter charge one. Um, however, if you've got coin coin, you enter charge three, which basically means you enter charge two. Um, and that's that's what you get out of it. It becomes a ritual right, effect. And if you have played Magic the Gathering or any of these types of uh, games where you can gain a temporary but significant boost to how much enter you have in a turn, it can become very, very, very strong. In fact, some decks that are playing coins and also have spells themes, absolutely this is an all-star for. So again, these are the cards that I think are less powerful um, because they go into less decks, but have very narrow effects that might make them all-stars in your coin decks. Um, my last tier is maybe don't tier. It's basically barely worth it, right? And this is like stuff like take off uh, We Cross Robo. Um, you don't gain coins for the duration of the game, but it, you gain um, coin, 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 coin. You basically gain five coins uh, if you if you play this, right? So this is basically a way to gain coins that you wouldn't normally gain. Currently, there's no effect right now that I'm like, oh, you should get coins as soon as possible. Um, there might be in the future. There's no reason that there couldn't be, right? All they need to do is make one card that says uh, five coins, uh, open all three lanes or something, right? And then suddenly you have a wombo combo here that's, that's good enough to probably play. So right now, probably not worth it to be playing uh, Takeoff Robo, but it's also worth mentioning that it exists and could be fine at some point in time. The Centurion and the um, the Aya are other choices too. Aya is one of the only ways that you can get a draw on level two, um, and it has a really, really minor function of being able to basically hide a card from the opponent's discard field uh, during your turn, which is fine. I've played this as a one of in the Aya deck itself just because I didn't I needed a two a, some a level two that was some kind of wall power and this has eight thousand power and it did an effect because I had some leftover coins that I needed to spend. Um not extremely amazing to be honest with you. Uh Centurion is actually pretty okay. Um it you spend two coins for the enter charge. It's significantly worse than Westeria. Um but it does get you enter in green for free, which is something that you want sometimes. Its action ability is fine. Its action ability is only okay because there's not really any other great weird way to remove things uh, in green. So sometimes it ends up being an overachiever in those green queen decks that you, you are lacking some amount of lane opening for. Um, but outside of this, this is like, these are barely worth playing. You could theoretically play them, but you really have a need to have a specific need for them. Um, I, even in my Mel deck, had four Centurion at one point and two Chirin. Uh, Chirin is the one that you play in the center and it, and enter charges you one. Uh, eventually I've gone to two Centurion and four Chirin instead, because Chirin is just more consistent and you don't always have the amount of coins. Uh, speaking about the amount of coins, let's talk about some coins here. So um, when you are thinking about spending coins, basically you need to be thinking in terms of one, twos, and threes. Uh, you really only get five coins a game unless you're playing a, an assist to get you an extra two coins, which you can do, and I have done to, to success before. Um, but when you are basically playing a thing that gets you, that costs a coin, right? Like let's say you key me, right? You are very rarely going to spend five coins in a game. Um, so my thought process is basically if I can have one coins and two coins, we'll ignore three coin spends for an, for right now. Um, I'm looking to spend two coins, one coin, one coin, one coin, or I'm looking to spend uh, two coins, two coins, one coin in a game. Um, in that respect, I kind of think of how long it takes to get these. So I end up going with something like six one coin spenders and four uh, two coin spenders really is 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 the amount that I go. And even less than that can be fine too. Like if you're trying to minimize the package there, you could actually go with like three two coin spenders, uh, four one coin spenders if you're going to do that. Um, and I find that ends up being a pretty good amount. You could overload on the coins and be fine with it too. 
Another thing is I count these as one coin spenders, by the way, even though I know they show up so much rarer. Um, but I'm more willing to put them in when I don't have really any other any other coin spending in here, just because the more you put in here, the more that it's kind of annoying. But they have luckily they have a life burst effect that doesn't exactly need coins, so they are a little safer to put in. Um, so you can put those in as one coin spenders and still be fine, and maybe even say for every two of these it can count as one one coin spender so generally speaking that's what i end up going with in my um in my mel deck or my uh my aya deck which are the two decks that i've spent the most time prepping for the gp it ended up being that that i ended up playing for yukimi and then about two i played two um of the uh westeria to to get enter so that put me at six one coin spenders, and then I played um, two of Aya's. So that's that's my breakdown. But I probably could have played three Aya if I really wanted to, and then I knew I would have maximized my coins every turn, but I would have been okay with it. The other one that I, I played a ton with is Mel, and with Mel, I basically ran three um, Donna's, which are three coin spenders, and I ran um, inevitably three Centurions, and I never really had a problem with that. Um, I knew that I could, uh, my whole game was basically dependent on being able to use Donna once and Centurion once, and that was fine. Inevitably, I think I, I trimmed it down to two Centurion just because I, I wanted some more, some other specific stuff. So it ended up being two Centurion and three Donna, and that worked out well for me in terms of the, uh, the about, the amount of, of, uh, what I could do with it. Now, bear in mind... Mel has a pretty good amount of filtering in the deck. At least I put a fair amount of filtering in the deck because green is a little bit of a weird color. Um, and Aya also has a significant amount of filtering in the deck. It just has a, a ton of draw. So I was able to find these cards and then enter the other ones that I didn't need. Um, but I think those are the ratios you should be using in your deck when it comes to coins. Again, the wild card being these sort of like one coiners. But I wouldn't be afraid to put those in as like two for to count one. So for example, if I was like, if I really, really wanted to be in my Mel deck, I think I'd run three Donna. Uh, so that's the three coin spender. I'd run um, two Centurion. That's the two coin spender. And then I probably would run two of these if I if I wanted to as a last ditch coin spender and that would probably get me the rest of the way there something you'll note is that I have not put any coins on here that are um like three coin cost four coin cost five coin cost because at that point you're just talking sorry not three coins obviously there's one here which is Donna uh four coin cost and three coin or four coin cost and five coin cost god I can't speak today um Really, when you get into four coins, five coins, you're basically looking at end of game stuff, and you're also needing to divide it into what uh, what L rigs do you have, right? Because Aya, for example, gets four coins when it starts. Um, at that point, yeah, you can run probably a four point four coin cost on a level one or level two and get away with it, but that's it. That's all you're doing, right? Same thing with like a five coin cost, right? At that point, it needs to be a level three or higher in order for it to work. I'm sure there's probably going to be some kind of coins cards that are good that are five coin or four coin cost that you basically, this is all you're spending on, but that's it. That's all you're doing, right? You should be probably running a three of that card in your deck and that's it. That's all you should run. You should not run any other coin stuff. Um, last one to talk about real quickly is, is Rill. Rill as a center is able to give you a lot of coins over the course of a game, but it's slow coin costs. I don't think it's really great there, but you could push the coin costs a little bit in that vein using sort of a similar sort of distribution that I said earlier. Well, that's what I think coins are for, and that's what I think the best coins are for. So please let me know if you guys are enjoying coins, if you guys have been using that mechanic a lot, and uh, if it's been helping you.